Welcome and hello. Let's talk the news. Today is July 2nd, 2024. And if you stick around or are a returning viewer, remember to like and subscribe to the video. If you don't, all powdered donuts will turn into intelligent aliens and repopulate the world. I talked about the presidential immunity case yesterday, so if you want to know more about that, check out that video. Today I want to cover the other rulings the Supreme Court went over in another edition of Let's See How the Supreme Court Wants to Screw Us. In Corner Post Inc. v. Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, the majority opinion was to change when statute of limitations started for when you could see a government when you could sue a government agency. To put this simply, Say there's a rule 50 years ago where you have to pay a fine every time you sit on a bench. Originally, it would have been that up to six years after that law was put into place, you could sue over the damages and attempt to get it overturned or removed as egregious under the Administrative Procedure Act, or APA. That means after 44 years ago, six years after the rule's issuance, there wouldn't be a capacity to sue the government. Now, you could still argue things like constitutionality and things like that, but just not suing directly for this. Today, by standards of the Supreme Court, there is opening for that. Now, it is six years starting when you are injured, or in this case, you receive the fine. This opens the door for businesses to fight against rules that are problematic to them legitimately, but it also opens the door for big corporations to lock the government in a near eternal loop of legal cases. This presents lots of questions. Do you have to go back to all the prior rulings over decades and reverse them if you reverse one? How does this maintain any semblance of statute of limitations? Can parent companies or subsidiaries do again as a new party? Lots of questions left unanswered in this one. In two separate cases, or rulings, I guess, Net Choice was fighting the state of Texas and Florida. These cases were to determine if the state laws could interfere with a company's ability to moderate the content it showed. Essentially, could Facebook and YouTube prevent misinformation about vaccines or other content getting pushed out, or would they have to follow some state law that says how they should moderate? The Supreme Court took a supreme step back, and in their opinion, basically called out that moderating your content as a social media platform was protected under the First Amendment, but that there's areas of content in social media-like platforms that may be able to be regulated. So they kicked this one back to the lower courts to determine what, when, and if certain content could be moderated or not before they might see it again in the future. For now, that means Texas, Florida, and other states can't interfere with content moderation that some may consider a censorship. All right, done with the Supreme Burrito Court out of the way, what's next? Boeing is in the news again, and this time not for killing anyone nor stranding them in space. Boeing is going to buy up the manufacturer of its airplane fuselages, Spirit Aerosystems. And in other great news, the current CEO of Boeing, Dave Calhoun, is going to step down. Whew, that means the terrible decision to get their planes manufactured by Spirit will go under much more competent leadership. The likely candidate, Pat Shanahan, the current CEO of Spirit Aerosystems. That's right, the most likely, likely successor to the person who made the big bad decision to split off part of Boeing's airplanes to Spirit Aerosystems will be the leader of that same company failing to meet safety standards. At least neither of them will get rich off of killing people, right? Oh wait, that might get a promotion, but also the headache of fixing the company. <laughs> that might be equivalent to murder. And what about Calhoun? Well, he'll be charged with murder, conspiracy to commit fraud, and committing fraud. Nah, just kidding. Though Boeing itself as a company has some of, has some of those coming their way, the fraud charges, um, and some fines, no, good old Dave will make 24 to $46 million for running Boeing into the ground. Literally. In some good news, the reality of cyberpunk's future with cool bionic limbs that can move, sense, and more is just about here. MIT researchers have figured out a way to get more information ro from robotic replacement legs into people's nervous systems. This has all sorts of benefits, and the future is super bright here, but the most impactful things are a natural walk for those people who have uh, missing a leg, better sensory return for more effective wa walking, getting around obstacles easier, and lowering things like phantom limb sensation thanks to that feedback. This is absolutely stunning news for people who have lost limbs or who may have been born with significant limb differences. In total, the estimate is 5.6 million Americans today suffer from one of those, and this is the beginning of a better future for all of them. Now on to something else that's completely unbelievable. What mass shootings happened yesterday? 
In Cincinnati, Ohio, at 306 East University Avenue, three individuals were killed and one injured. Two of the deceased were father and son. The police do not know what led up to the shooting, but they do have a suspect in custody. In Charleston, Missouri, at 700 South Street, six individuals were injured when an unknown number of shooters fired into vehicles in a crowd. There's no more information available yet on this one. And let's end on a controversial topic. Making your bed is a waste of time and worse for your health. If you make your bed, you are sealing in lots of the dirt and sweat you put into it at night. It's not protecting it from that stuff. It's locking it in tight. On top of that, no one's ever died from sleeping in an unmade bed. But I guarantee you there's some OCD psycho out there who has killed someone by tucking them in too tightly.